Good morning, noon, evening or night, depending when you're watching this video. My name is a legend and welcome back to World of Tanks and the greatest of games featuring several different games with a general theme and the theme of these games will be dealing damage. And first off, I'm playing in my STRV S1 on a special quest in order to do quite a bit of damage because I'm working on TD8 for the object 260 this game meaning that I need to do five times more damage than the HP of my vehicle in the case of the STR VS1 with 1000 hit points I need to deal 5000 now for this mission I consider the STR VS1 or the UDES the best things for, to do this since they have such a low HP pool even for their tier and you do have better damage dealers maybe the uh, tier 10 strv 103 b which can definitely deal more damage since it meets more tier 10s but the strv 103 b for example has 1800 hp meaning that you do need to do 9000 damage in that case which is well a significant bit higher than 5000 which is also still quite high but more reasonable especially since i know that i have done more than 5000 damage in this specific vehicle once or twice before but for these games it is really how the battle is continuing through in order to see how we can deal the best amount of damage because at the starting position i have to well typical starter position even got a good shot off but at this point i'm relocating further back because i predict that the enemy team is making quite a push far in the west of the map quite a amount of enemies are now facing against well, only two of my teammates but then i even go further back because the initial location wasn't really effective, I couldn't really get shots off and when I maybe could later on the enemies would be traversing so far that they are going to spot me if I fire and then I'm kind of out of in the open so that position was quite vulnerable and besides this position further in the back is also so much more stronger but keeping the position before in mind i could still might have helped out my teammates a little bit more if the enemies were really enthusiastic and pushed through but since that didn't happen i unfortunately had to abandon all support that i could give towards my team because right now now that the enemies are advancing they are close enough that they are now able to spot me after i fire but this is the reason why this position is so strong and it's this rock the solid cover means that i'm safe from enemy fire on well one particular direction because if there was somebody in the middle, I will still be in kind of a troublesome position. But still, I can get a lot of cover and they cannot hit and damage me. So after that, I use a bit more of push mechanics in order to not get spotted after I fire. Because that's the most ideal situation to have. So we can keep the exact position to continue on firing at your enemies instead of continuously creeping behind the solid cover and then once again back which may take longer than your reload and it also helps that the strv is a pretty stealthy tank which means that when the vk right there is pushing into the open i still don't get spotted i still don't fully know how effective this camo is because sometimes i think i get spotted but then i don't get spotted and other times i do get spotted where i think from how like distance push and such but right now i'm rushing down the t32 to finish off all pressure from this flank which is going to be a very important thing later on but unfortunately i make a huge mistake right here 
I'm not going into siege mode, which I could easily have done and I take a shot for it and that shot will bite me in the ass later on, although the shot wasn't in the ass. Or I do not take shots in the ass this game, I think, I hope. No, never mind that, but I could still have switched towards siege mode within the reload of the T-32 and confirm the kill without taking damage. So a bit of a misplay right there. But now with all the pressure of this flank gone, I'm going to traverse further up the flank, trying to see if we can pull off an assault attack with the spotting of the ELC even 90. But then I notice that the other flank is now collapsing. Too many enemies are now overrunning the few teammates that I have left there. So once again, I am falling fully back because I know that the artillery are not going to survive that long. So I cannot traverse all the way up there to support them. So it's going back to the strongest position on this side in a defensive situation. And from this position, I just can do so much things. I now even have some extra cover of a little protruding hill so I can keep hidden most of my tanks, showing as little profile as possible and just trying to see the enemies coming and the simply point and click. It's the standard procedure. Just a bit of aiming here and there, trying to calculate if the tanks are driving the same route and such, but there's not much more to it than that. So now I am one shot away from dealing 5000 damage and the enemies are closing in. It is now the key on trying to predict which enemy tank is going to peak first. I have all my bets on the heavy tank since he has the most armor, most confident and luckily I hit him getting over 5000 damage but can I continue? Unfortunately not. If I not have taken the shot of the T-32, I might actually have a very good chance of winning this game. Although facing off against two light tanks, even in this strong position, they might still have found a way in order to outflank me and outplay me. A LH MTV was a one shot for me, but the ELC did need to take two more shots. But still, 5,000 damage is 5,000 damage. It's still quite impressive, even in this thing. But it was pretty much the circumstances that also provided a lot of damage. So the key moments of this battle, which really had to do with, well, just <laughs> personal skill and less of the situation is Keep locating until you find a optimal position with solid cover. I cannot repeat enough how important it is to have at least solid cover nearby so you can always hide behind it and not take any damaging shots, especially as a tank destroyer, you don't generally have a lot of hit points. Also having a good defensive position on multiple advancing enemies of one flank is really important in order for especially this kind of tank destroyer to deal a lot of damage. Being in a ambush location from long distances it is really easy in especially when the enemies are determined to push further along you can easily have some very good side shots and wear them down as they make their advance. And also a very important choice that I make was to finish off the enemy pressure of one flank if possible. Even though the ELC eventually would have joined my flank as well and also have finished off the T-32. Simply taking this initiative, being able to later on fall back to the same location and only have to focus on one flank once again for most of the the duration of the end game. So TD8 for the object 260. You do need to have the map and the situation at hand, but when you notice these kind of things happening, do take the strongest defensive position, especially in these kind of tanks, which are the most preferable tanks for this mission. 
Next up, it is me once again playing in my Kunzer Panzer, the tier 9 German medium tank you can get from the Battle Pass. It's an interesting medium tank with again a travel mode and a siege mode, but it's a little bit more complicated than that because in the siege mode it basically gives you better accuracy but worse aim time, worse DPM and worse mobility. So it's really a tank that is a little bit harder to master. On what moment do you choose the siege mode because even though you are more accurate you do sacrifice a lot of other statistics. So in the start it is definitely preferable to use the siege mode as much as possible since you most of the time be firing at long ranges since you don't have much armor you do need to keep your distance and especially on this kind of position i have got several crossfire shots that have to be in the sniper modus otherwise the accuracy would not allow me to hit these kinds of shots and for most of this time it is just searching some of the gaps some of the angles between the houses that I have to really surprise the enemies and like that I've dealt already 1500 damage but now I am relocating towards the valley flank because my platoon mates do need to have some backup well actually platoon mate because my platoon mate Toby Thomas in his T95 is requiring some help since now oh, he's alone, T95, he can be easily outflanked. So going there to act like an extra support and a defense for his side and rear. So in the valley, I am brawling for a moment against a KV-5. Now you do notice that I've switched back to travel mode in order to get here as fast as possible, but I keep on in travel mode since the distance is so close that I can reliable hit the shots even though my accuracy is a little bit more worse. My aim time is better, my DPM is better, my mobility is better. So in this case I am keeping on drive modes when I'm firing at the enemy tanks. Although I miss one shot but that could very well also happen with the accuracy improved. And like that I am qu quite quickly disposing of the KV-5. Luckily I do not take damage from the T-30 otherwise this battle could have been a lot more different. But now also as quickly as possible relocating in order to destroy the T-54 lightweight who was assaulting my platoon mate in the rear. And it is also right now against the T-30 that the better reload time on this gun gives me an extra shot in his tracks, which might not have happened if I was now in sniper mode once again. So moving further up the flank, I am now facing off against the T-30 at close range and notice that I'm taking shots peeking around the corner when I notice that the T-30 is not paying attention to me. So I see that he's very much occupied still with the T-95. Not sure why, I would immediately aim back for the lesser armored target. But right now my other platoon mate MPNL and PNL is moving up. The T-30 fires at him and after he fires I take this opportunity to fire several shots back moving in and once again with a slightly better reload I'm not getting killed by the T-30. <laughs> again something which might not have happened if I still was in sniper mode. But also in sniper mode I could not even have comfortably outmaneuvered the T-30 in the first place. And like that, we are moving further and further, facing off against the Kramatov Borsak Waffentrager. And of course, what do we do in that case? We fire HE. Well, we miss HE in the first shell because I'm still an auto aiming dope. But eventually, we get some fires off. But after missing another shot, I get a little bit too overconfident. I think I can still outflank the Kramatov Borsak Waffentrager, but notice the EBR too late and he kills me. So I could have done even more damage than the 6300 that I have done. But my team has such an advantage now that we are not losing this. So a great victory alongside with a 
how serious amount of damage this game. So this game also shows you, of, or also showed me the best moments to use either the sniper mode or travel mode in the Kunzerpanzer. But first off, the very first position that I took, of course, a very strong one, which already gave me one and a half thousand damage by simply having line of fire on multiple angles on multiple animal teams in between the houses, surprising them, etc. etc. That's more or less the standard shit, but well, it, it gets the job done. So even though it is quite the typical strategy, it is still valuable to mention it. But after that, it was the relocating towards the flank to back up some teammates. And this is especially a good thing if you are inside a platoon and you have a whole flank only with a platoon so you can really coordinate your attack on the enemies, inform your other platoon mates which enemies are now fired or are aiming at you or not at you depending on which of your platoon mates can actually fire back without risking taking hit points in that peak. But it's also engaging the enemies on the right time and in the case of the Kunzerpanzer with the right mode. Because with the Kunzerpanzer I noticed that you only want to use sniper mode when you are really firing at long distances. Short to mid ranges are far better to use the travel mode. Even though you have less accuracy, your aim time, maneuverability and DPM is giving back so much more potential damage and if you just simply aim correctly and peek at the correct times like against the T30 knowing when he was not paying attention to me or when he had fired you are able to show yourself even outflank him and outgun him and this way you can accumulate this amount of damage if you play your cards correctly so the last game of this video, it is me uh, once again. Yeah, just, just, I have too many replays of myself showing. I, I know I am a narcissist. I can't help it. So deal with it. So I'm playing in the STB one and this is my damage record game. So of course it is a feature in this video. So since it is my highest damage record game, I want to give as much live commentary as possible. Just showing off how I deal with this enemy team and how I get as much damage. So starting off not very strong, I take a very bad trade against that VZ55 and SDB1. And for most of the time, I am keeping my damage counter on 366. It is really trying to find multiple angles, waiting for the enemies to make their move. And it really doesn't really happen until I notice this badget in the open when I am finally finding several enemy tanks now daring to show themselves in the open. Now it is really a question of predicting if enemies are showing up away from solid cover so you can fire at them. So I'm continuously scouting the map in order to find enemies that might peek somewhere. So especially that leopard, don't know why he peeked. If I was him I should have done that a little bit later or <laughs> for a while completely not. But you can see there are also enemies downside, so I'm first checking if I have a clear fire angle, but another leopard shows up, so I'm focusing him first. And on this point, it's also not taking damage yourself. The more hit points you preserve, the more risk you can take in the mid to end game which is going to be very valuable this game believe me so now with the enemy forces making their move more towards our half of the map i'm now switching around on this position and i catch the t57 heavy out and continuously just continuously trying to search 
which enemies are in my line of fire away from solid cover now i do have a clear fire line towards the enemies at the bottom of the hill so i take this shot at the object without getting fired back at but now they are noticing me up the hill from Balalo, so i'm again looking the other way and hey the enemy stb1 is now making his way maybe he was thinking that i would keep my attention towards the other flank but <laughs> i ain't like that and i want to do more damage more and more damage so i'm keeping an eye out of all my flanks and also once again catch out the object to, for 30 u so the key here for well, the last few minutes is pretty much keeping this strong position i mean this hill on tundra is pretty much the strongest position on this map and really keeping an eye on multiple flanks because a lot of times you might tunnel vision towards a certain flank wait until enemy tanks showed up right now the circumstances are more clear when you should direct your line of fire to a specific site but always try to look around and find the best fire lines the best flanks in order to get damaging shots off so once again back at the t 10 e3 now firing premium of course otherwise i cannot ban him but right after looking back once again i now see that the 60 ptp is making his move so with a little bit of care for the centurion action 10 i noticed that i once once again can use the tactic of Showing myself because the 60TP is occupied with the IS-7. And now I notice that this Leopard is also very keen on peeking. So I'm acting that I'm now fully committed to the 60TP. But I keep an eye out for the Leopard 1. But even though I might have been a little bit more in cover. But the Leopard some, for some reason is peeking at exactly the right time when I am reloaded. And now the 60TP is fully engaged with the i7, so it is just free damage for me from here on out. And after that, when I have some downtime, once again look around everywhere on the map in order to spot the most easy target to engage. Which in this case is the Krangwangen making his way up the slope. Although I might have driven a little bit further out, maybe I could have fired behind the rock. But now with only a few enemy tanks left, I can finally leave this position. It doesn't happen that much that these kind of strong positions are well, used for, for such long of the game. But it was really usable since the enemies are pretty much trying to advance from all angles towards our base so i always had something to do from all directions and i still got enough cover on that position but right now i am encountering well the whole thing that gives me my top damage a last remaining full hp deck panzer e100 that i have for pretty much for myself for quite a time and with the dpm of the stb1 i am quite easily chipping away pretty much all of the hp of the jack so except for one shot of 400 damage from the strv i have done all of the damage on that jack so giving me over 9000 damage in this game so a damage record and what kind of damage record it is not over 10,000 damage <laughs> would be a nice next goal to have but still a damage record nonetheless with an impressive amount so how did this happen well first of all it is quite a similar predicament that I have with the Kunzepanzer because I once again went to a strong position with multiple fire angles. However, this position was useful for pretty much the entire 
battle. Really trying to engage their enemies on the right time, on the right flanks, trying to find which enemies I can fire at or which enemies are now pressuring this location or my teammates the most in order to decide which ones to engage. Also against that 60TP, it was noticing when he was occupied with the IS-7 and against the Leopard 1, it is trying to give him a sense of misdirection of letting him think that I am now fully engaged with the 60TP but always keep an eye out for him and pretty much all the enemies at all time. Well, not at all times, sometimes I did need to have full attention to one flank, but especially during the times that I don't have the direct line of fire, I can look around and maybe determine that another flank is easier to farm some more damage at. And of course, a thing that really helped along in the end is a full HP, yeah, Pansy E100 to feast on. Quite a bit of circumstantial luck that you need to have, but also I still did like 7000 damage from making the right decision to go to the right position and keeping an eye out on all flanks and trying to determine which flanks are best to be engaged. So that is pretty much the end of this video. Hope you will deal a lot of damage after watching and learning from this video. And as always, I will see you next time. Laters!